I recently started some edge retention comparisons cutting up some pine. Now I've done a lot of edge retention comparisons in the past, slicing hemp, slicing cardboard, but I hadn't really looked at a lot of push cutting edge retention. Got a large amount of scrap pine, wanted to carve it up to make shavings because they're nice for starting fires. And now this is coming up to be camp season and beach sort of season and a lot of friends. It's a nice thing to give them when they're going out. Very easy way to start a fire on a beach. A little bag of shavings, throw it on, lights with a match, and they burn much longer than cardboard and paper. And of course, let's be real here, I enjoy doing this type of thing anyway, so I look for excuses to cut this stuff up. So interestingly, I was going to look at a few different things when I started off. So the method that I used was I'd take a knife. This is the K2 collaboration between Spyderco and Faradmir. So I'd set the edge on this water stone, 300 grit, Swahiro Ryu, and I'd use the plateau method of sharpening I've been talking about lately, which allowed me to jump right from this stone to finish the apex or micro bevel with this stone, which is Spyderco Fine, to sharp maker stone. Then I'd do one round of cutting on the pine. Then the next time I'd look at just resetting the micro bevel with the sharp maker fine, and then I'd do it one more time. So I did three rounds with each knife. And initially, when I did it, I found that there was a very fast fall off in edge retention that the edge retention was almost 50% less when I just reset the apex bevel and it dropped off again when I just reset the apex bevel again and this was consistent over a bunch of knives then it came to me that the reason why I might be seeing that loss in edge retention is that this is a very fine stone and when you go to sharpen a knife on it you often don't even make contact over the full width of this stone because you're not going to be 100% straight if the knife rocks a little bit. You'll end up making contact on just one of these corners and you can see this quite clearly if you do a little work on the stone. You'll often pick up the black streaks very strongly on the corners versus actually in the middle of the stone. What does this mean? Well it means very low contact areas, very high pressures. So I figured what might actually be happening is that the reason that I'm getting reduced edge retention on the second and third runs was because I was just deforming the apex with the high pressure versus cutting it off. So then what I did was I switched to using extremely light force. Now I'm not going to argue this is practical. I even made a video where I talked about it. But I do between 25 and 35 passes per side to reset the apex bevel. Again, that's 50 to 70 passes. Again, not practical, really, because of time, but I was just looking at to see if that's the reason why I was suffering edge retention loss. And it turns out that most likely is the case. When I was using those long, long number of passes, the edge retention stayed fairly consistent. The edge retention fresh from the stone and then apex bevel was the same as if I just did that touch-up type thing reset the apex bevel. So that was quite interesting. First result. The other result, which was even more interesting because it was rather unexpected, there was no real correlation at all between the type of steel and the result. So here's a knife, CPM 10V from Big Chris. Fifteen and twenty from Sford. And I even looked at very simple steels, AUS six, looked at some interesting ones, some very old, you know, common standbys, four forty C, bowlers, cobalt variant, and of course can't complete anything without getting one of the Chinese Movis class deals. And I even looked at some exotic materials such as this very nice knife from Jeremy McCollum in SM100, which is not even a blade steel at all. 
as a super alloy, technically. And what I found, it was just random scatter. And when I started looking at it a bit more carefully, even though I was cutting one type of wood, pine, and it was mainly even from one type of store, and one particular type of wood, I was mainly looking at waste pieces of trim. The change in pine was much greater than the change in steels. So even though I did two runs with each, and initially I thought, well, it's pine, it's all the same type of material, it comes from the same store, it's mainly all trim stock, it's going to be rather consistent. So two runs with each knife should give me you know, a decent correlation. And I was trying to see where the actual performance would sort of maximize, because I knew the hardness and I knew the carbide volumes. So you would think as the hardness sort of increased, your edge retention would increase. And you would think as the carbide volume increased, your edge retention would increase for a while, but at some point it would sort of fall off. Because as carbide volume goes up, your apex stability goes down. And again, I was looking at very, very high sharpness, spider cut fine, and I was stopping the trials when the knife would no longer shave, which is still, you know, decently sharp. But interestingly enough, and there's a link down in the description where you can actually see the full table of results and you can see there's no correlation in steels whatsoever. They just randomly scatter. And that's kind of interesting in and of itself. Because a lot of times if you look in reviews and even in commentaries, people say, oh no, you know, I'd never be able to use, you know, Chinese steel like this or a very basic steel like AUS-6. They go blunt way too fast. Mainly they're just out doing random cutting. They're not even doing you know, a decently semi-controlled sort of comparison to focus on the steels. But I was counting passes, I was measuring sharpness, I was making sure apex angles was the same, I was making sure edge retention um, was about as close to being constrained as I possibly could, and the only thing that was varying is that I was using a natural material called pine, which was enough to be a bigger difference than all the blade steels. The difference in one piece of pine to another was bigger than the difference between CPM 10V at like 64 Rockwell and 15 and 20 in the high 50s. So uh, take that from what you will about claims of edge retention when you look at much less controlled uh, cutting. Based on what I'm seeing in this work I'd actually need to random sample the pine, which I never thought I'd have to, in order to get consistent edge retention results. And I'd need to do at least three to five runs random sampling the pine. That's a massive amount of work. I may do that at some point. I'd need a massive amount of wood in order to do it. But it'll be kind of interesting. But I won't do it on all the knives because it's simply far too much cutting. But I'll probably pick a couple, say something like CPM 10V, which is both very hard, very high carbide, and then I'll pick a simpler steel that's also very hard, and then I'll pick a simpler steel that's rather soft, and I'll pick a simpler steel that's rather soft and has high carbide. And from those four steels, see if I can find some kind of pattern, and that will be kind of interesting. Uh, a couple of other final notes. Look at the pattern on this. That's kind of cool. See where the inside square is darker? That's the exact inverse of the rubber base pattern. It looks like the rubber base pattern is causing the stone to dry unevenly. That's what I'm assuming it is anyway. I'm going to take the rubber base pattern off for a while and see if the drying goes away.